I see so many videos from doctors that recommend keto and they have millions of views on Instagram or YouTube and it drives me nuts. Honestly, it drives me really nuts because I get the messages all the time that, yeah, I tried keto, it worked for me initially, but then I felt worse and I gained all my weight back and all this kind of stuff. And I'm going to explain to you in this video why keto can help in the first place sometimes, but it's an absolute disaster in the long term and it can't work long term for any kind of diseases, for weight gain, for any of that. So why is keto even helping in the first place? The good thing about it is that most people get rid of a very high standard American diet. They get rid of processed foods, they get maybe rid of seed oils, of all this kind of junks, the cookies, the cakes, the donuts, the soda, and they get rid of it, which is a good thing. Of course, I love when people are doing that and it can actually help you to feel better. Of course, you feel better when you get rid of all this junk in your food. But the problem is, any diet that you do, it doesn't matter what kind of diet you do, if you get rid of processed food, you feel better all the time. Because it's just such a big difference when you're coming from eating all of this junk and then you remove all of it and then you only hit whole foods, for example, what people are doing mostly on keto. But why do I get so many messages about, I tried keto, it helped me initially, but then I got worse and I got my way back? Because... Keto is a high-fat diet. It's a very high-fat diet. And especially for autoimmune diseases, it's detrimental if you are on a high-fat diet because the only way to get rid of autoimmune is by cleansing your body out of the toxins, out of the pathogens that are in your body. And if you eat a high-fat diet, you really bog down your liver. It's really hard for your liver to digest all these high fats because your liver has to produce lots of bile to disperse fat cells and every time you eat more high fat high fat high fat then your liver is burdening you, you burden your liver all the time with that and your liver is the most important organ when it comes to detoxification when it comes to cleansing so the issue here is the more fat you eat, the less your liver can detoxify and you actually burden your liver with all that fat and your liver uh, is almost not able anymore to process that fat anymore. And if you eat more and more fat, then that means that your liver comes to a point sooner or later where it can't process fat anymore. It even has to store fat cells in the liver. So this can lead to more weight gain in the end. That's why people lose weight first because they cut out all the processed food, their livers can recover a little bit, they lose weight, they clean up their diet, but then in the long term, the liver gets sluggish and pre-fatty or fatty again because of all the fat they eat. Additionally, if you have a lot of fats in your bloodstream, when you have a lot of fats that are thickening up your bloodstream, you have less oxygen in your bloodstream and you can't cleanse anymore that good. And... Fats also cause lots of acidity in the body. Why is that? Because fats are in and of itself acidic. That's why are they called that's why they're called fatty acids. You ever thought about that? Fats are making you more acidic and we all know that you need an alkaline environment in your body to prevent or to heal disease as well. So this is actually very important. And the next big thing that all these Doctors, podcast doctors, YouTube experts, health experts don't know is that they don't even know the real cause of what's going on with you in the first place. You have brain fog, you have Hashimoto, you have adrenal fatigue, you have tingling and numbness, you have MS, whatever it is, you have seizures. Then they just say, yeah, do keto, but they can't explain you in the first place on why you even have these issues. They can't say to you or they don't know that the Epstein-Barr virus is responsible for Hashimoto or for your MS. They don't know that. And if they don't know this, how can they actually give you good advice on what kind of foods you eat? Then they say to you, you need a lot of eggs, which, by the way, is the very thing that is feeding pathogens in your body like no other food on this planet. So it's making your autoimmune diseases even worse long-term. And the next big thing when it comes to these high-fat diets is that you basically deprive your body of the most important nutrient, which are carbohydrates. It is actually the only way of getting a nutrient into a cell. 
And if you don't eat enough carbohydrates, you don't even get nutrients into a cell. And it's exactly the opposite that is happening if you eat high-fat foods. If you eat high-fat foods, your bloodstream is filled with fats that hinders nutrient absorption. Why is that? Because you need glucose and insulin to get nutrients into a cell. And fats interfere with that process. They block insulin from attaching to sugar and to tissue cells to open up. And nutrients in your bloodstream, they are not meant to be there a long time. They should, you should eat nutrients they should get into your bloodstream and they should be absorbed quickly by your liver. And fats actually hinder that absorption. So the less or the, the more fat you eat, the less nutrients you absorb and pee out in the end because nutrients have also have only a shelf life in your bloodstream and they should be absorbed quickly. And fats hinder that absorption, making it harder for your body to get all the nutrients that your body needs. And this is actually critical if you're trying to heal from any kind of autoimmune disease. And still, carbohydrates are still treated as a devil. And of course, I'm not talking about processed carbohydrates like pasta or pizza or wheat gluten or whatever. I'm talking about the real stuff. I'm talking about the fruits. I'm talking about the starchy vegetables, the whole foods. A lot of people even think that these are also unhealthy and that you should consume them in moderation, for example. But... They don't do any harm. They were never the culprit. The real culprit is the fat. Carbs are actually the very thing that is the most important thing for your liver. But why are people still afraid of carbs? Because we think that carbs are making us fat, that they're bad for the liver, but it's actually the complete opposite. Because your liver needs glucose, which is carbohydrates. They need carbohydrates to thrive. Liver cells need carbohydrates to thrive. It's their fuel to work, to neutralize the toxins, to detoxify the body. And if you eat a lot of fats, it bogs down your liver. It's the complete opposite of what they say. And even fructose is not harmful for your liver. You can drink 32 ounces, 64 ounces of orange juice every day, and it's not going to lead to a fatty liver. Because fatty liver is not caused by sugar, it's caused by fat. You know, that's why it's called a fatty liver. Otherwise, it wouldn't make any sense, right? And another thing is that people are afraid of sugar. People are afraid of carbs because they think carbs are the same thing as processed sugar, which is not true at all. It's like comparing spring water to your toilet water. And the next thing is that they say that all carbs are raising your blood sugar in the same way. This is not the problem because carbs were never the problem when it comes to blood sugar. If you are eating a high-fat diet, you know, you eat, you eat keto, for example, and then you incorporate a little bit of carbs again and your blood sugar spikes, it's not because the carbs are bad, it's because the fat is hindering the insulin from attaching to the tissue cells and to the glucose to open up. So fats, they slow down the absorption rate. Fats lead to insulin resistance because the glucose can be absorbed by your body, by your cells, because fat are hindering the process. The carbs are only the messenger. They are only the messenger. And you want to shoot the messenger if you want to avoid carbs. So you avoid the carbs and you eat high fats, high fats, high fats, and this is leading to the same problem again and again and again. Because first you, depri you deprive your body you don't get rid of your blood sugar issues because carbs are not the reason for blood sugar issues. The reason for blood sugar issues are the fats. Additionally to that, you can cleanse your body and you will never get rid of your autoimmune disease long term if you are on a ketogenic or a high fat diet. It's just not possible because you deprive your body so much. That's why a lot of people on carnivore nowadays are incorporating fruit because they realize they don't have energy on carnivore Carnivore is basically also just a high-fat diet. And they realize they need carbs in their life to function, just to think clearly, to have more energy. They bring in fruits again, and then they think they found the holy grail by incorporating fruits and meat in their diet, or fruit and only meat or whatever. But the fruit is the only thing that was keeping them alive and that is helping them to function again and to have energy again. It's not the meat, it's not the dairy, it's not the eggs. It's the fruit that is keeping them alive and then is getting them back to life. That's why they include 
carbohydrates again. And sooner or later, everybody has to incorporate carbohydrates again in huge amounts. And sooner or later, everybody has to get rid of their fear about carbohydrates because otherwise we won't be able to heal. We deprive ourselves from the most important nutrient and the most important energy source, which is carbohydrates. And we deprive ourselves from one of the most healing foods on the planet, which is fruit and starchy vegetables. It's not only the carbs that are in there, it's also antioxidants, vitamins, phytochemicals, so many things that you absorb from fruit, for example. And if you miss that, if you are not doing that, it's insanity. It's absolutely insanity because it is the most healing thing. And if you understand what disease is really about, if you understand what's causing disease, then you would understand that you need carbs in your life. And that's why these keto diets are detrimental when it comes to autoimmune diseases because every autoimmune disease is caused by pathogens such as Epstein-Barr virus or the shingles virus. And if you're doing keto, it's very much likely that you eat dairy, that you eat eggs. And these two foods are among the two top foods that feed viruses in your body. So it makes everything worse long-term. And when you would incorporate more fruits and more starchy vegetables, but especially fruits, they have vitamin C. Guess what vitamin C is doing to your body? It's antiviral. It's strengthening your immune system. That's why fruit can help you heal autoimmune diseases. And that's why keto is not doing it. And if you want to know more about that, I also made a video about the health crisis in 2024 that we are in right now. So you want to make sure to check that out as well. And if you want to really know on how to heal autoimmune diseases, if you want to really get to the root causes of your symptoms and actually what's going on in your body and to get rid of these issues, then there's a link in the description where you can book a free discovery call with us where we can see if and how we can help you and see if we can support you in the best possible way. Yeah, talk soon and uh, thank you for watching.